Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dan Messier Questions, episode 454. Each, each week, yeah, or at least mainly each week, um, <laughs> with a few gaps, um, we, to, we meet here to discuss uh, and uh, um, scrutinise the, the, the answers given on the dumb SEO questions Facebook group. And we record them here. Here you'll find Tim Kappa. Tim is uh, a... Um, uh, Google product expert uh, in the Google My Business community. Uh, he's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. And um, uh, you can find him online at onlineownership.com. You can find Masataki Wasa at uh, wasaweb.net. Uh, Masataki lives in the suburb of Wimbledon in uh, the United Kingdom. Kingdom in no, it's not, is it? Is it United Kingdom, Wimbledon in the UK? Holy shit, Jim! Yes, it is. <laughs> you, you you need to have an extra nap in the afternoon, mate. <laughs> <laughs> the Wombles of Wimbledon, mate. The Wombles of Wimbledon coming <laughs> away. Do 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> Now, we didn't expect David Razam to be here today, but he's just um, joined us. Uh, David Razam is uh, based in um, uh, West Sussex. And, um, yeah, um, David uh, can be found at uh, Chameleon Marketing and davidrazam.com. And uh, Masataki Wasa, um, he's webmaster of wasaweb.net. Um, he's also a Google product expert in the uh, uh, AdSense community. All right, let's get rolling. We've got 16 questions tonight, um, uh, David. How's Thelonious? Um, he's, he's recovering. Um, he's, thank you for asking. Um, he's got two weeks until he goes back to see the uh, the specialist to um, have it judged as to how well he is recovering. But um, yes, he's uh, he's behind me on the floor. I can't pick him up because uh, that may uh, upset his back. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. but he's 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 okay, aren't you? <laughs> no, no doubt you'll have to get a second job to pay the vet's bill. Oh God, yes. Well, thankfully we have um, we have insurance uh, for such things, and uh, he's he's so far um, he's so far racked up about seven and a half thousand pounds worth of uh, of bills of one sort or another. Hey. It's not inconsiderable. No, no, and he—it's—he's um, still racking up some more, but these are um, relatively small amounts. Uh, there for a physiotherapist to come and uh, manipulate him from time to time. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get cracking. Um, our first question is from Yusef Zaduri. Um, it's titled "A Small and Hidden H1 Tag." Um, and Yusuf went on to say, uh, if I want to add a keyword as my H1 tag, uh, but it's not very relevant to the page, so I don't want it to show up on the page as physical text. Am I able to make it small and hidden, but still have that as my H1 tag? Are there any negatives uh, to doing that? Um, I, I don't know why you would want to do this. Um, why would you want to to add a um, a keyword that's not anything to do with your page? Um, why have you even written your page like that if uh, you want that keyword to appear on it or um, for the for the theme of the page to be around that uh, keyword? Aside from that. 
hiding text uh, on a uh, on a page is very bad. Google will uh, will hammer you for it. Um, <clears throat> so, um, if you want to have this key phrase uh, represented by your your page, write some content about that key phrase. Don't try to be underhand about it. You know, Google has spent a lot of dollars and a lot of time uh, trying to find uh, trying to find ways of uh, that, that we as uh, uh, as webmasters try to uh, uh, try to uh, try to comment, if, if you wish. Um, so yes, um, don't do it. Be straightforward. Put good content on your page, uh, and don't try to trick Google because it's cleverer than you. Thank you, David. It's just hit hit the um, the news. Uh, Liz Truss is uh, uh, the UK Prime Minister. At least she was this morning, um, and she's not anymore. Hey! <laughs> right. Any more on this one? Okay, let's roll on to the next. Kath Lynn uh, asked the question titled, is there a way to get quality backlinks fast? Good heavens. Um, she said, I'm curious, as our competitors have more than 30 to 50,000 backlinks, I doubt if they did those manually or perhaps I am missing something. Anybody? Um, there's no way to get quality backlinks fast. You can get all sorts of rubbish backlinks fast, which is um, almost certainly what your competitor has done. Have you actually looked at uh, what these um, backlinks are? And if so, uh, do you really have an idea what quality is? Um, so no. Um, if they're... Um, they, so you're right. I doubt if they did those manually. Um, absolutely, they did not do those manually. Um, not unless they've got a whole uh, a whole building full of monkeys trying to build them. Um, so um, so you're not missing anything, um, and it's there's not a way to get quality backlinks fast um, that I know of. So yes, I think that's the. Uh... <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I'm being distracted by Tim Capper. Yes. Uh, yes. So um, yeah, there you are. Um, they uh, they've um, paid a lot of money, or maybe not so much money, to um, to have a load of crappy backlinks, uh, which Google will ignore. Uh, yeah. the, uh, by the way, bef before you uh, answer that one, uh, Tim, um, I'm telling you that, that they've um, changed the format and uh, anything in the chat uh, is displayed on the main screen. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Um, yeah, you, you could... You could get backlinks uh, fast. Um, you need a super freaking product and you need an epic PR campaign, right? So, uh, and, and you can do this with, uh, with, you know, even the most random things. I'll give you one example of a campaign we did uh which was for a wheelie bin company remember you know wheelie bins the freaking plastic jobs outside your house right so you think well how do you create an epic campaign for wheelie bins well quite a few years ago we were thinking about the same thing and it was like right we're going to have the wheelie bin games 
and we got all the local councils involved um, and we set certain tasks for their bin men and of course we picked it all up and then their bin men were doing all sorts of crazy shit with wheelie bins and uh, all the councils like government sites were publicizing this on what they were doing blah 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 blah, blah or linking back to the supplier happy days um, so yeah you've got to have an awesome product uh, or at least a product that's not going to fall to pieces um, that's marketable and yeah you know you, you just got to come up with an idea man and you got to push it and you got to work it so there is a way yep all right look i can't go past uh, without uh, mentioning michael martinez's um contribution on this um and um you know the, the thanking um you guys of course are here every week and uh, um the, your, your contribution is, is just enormous but um michael martinez and uh, I, I i don't know when he sleeps um yeah he said don't put a critical business website at risk by subscribing to random spam tools that people may recommend in online discussions by the same token just because you're getting large backlink reports from seo tools for competitive websites Remember that many of these links may no longer exist, may not be indexed by the search engines, or may not be counted by the search engines, even if the uh, pages that host them are indexed. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, Michael Martinez. Abiyomi John Belurgan, um, he um, asked the question that's titled, can someone rank number one with an e-commerce site if your name is jeff bezos you, you probably would good um and anyway abiomi goes on to say uh, an, an e-commerce website can have many niche like blog posts as well but my question is how can someone rank number one on a uh, google page with a, an e-commerce site does it mean one has to be posting a different product every day I was thinking about this one. Um, when, when, when we, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Right. So you you don't you don't need to post content every day. You need to post relevant content as and when is required for that product, that top level category. Um, it's not about blog posts. It's about creating um helpful helpful user content around that so um to give you some kind of example uh let's see what am i working with ecom at the minute okay so um we're working with uh f um, working with furniture right uh specifically outdoor bistro aluminium um a bit of steel furniture right so how do i get uh okay so we you first start on top 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 level category is aluminium bistro sets all right now within that so how do we look at different types of content that we're going to post and not every day it's when it's ready that can benefit the rest of that so content can also be doesn't have to be post it can also be FAQs on the actual product page itself, right? And you can build onto that as people ask you questions about it. You develop, you 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 get a bigger and broader, and you build it up. So you can have FAQs actually on the product page itself about it. Like, yeah, you can. In this instance, the the chairs are solid, but the table you've still got to put the top on. So there's like four screws. So in that instance, there's a video. Um, 
which you know is additional content which is showing how to add that that video can then also go onto a page in on your blog which could be let's say you call it um uh, buying guide you know uh aluminium furniture buying guide and in that this is where you're going to you know funnel it funnel it to that so um and uh, different tables you can have a video then you have the transcript from when you showed it the, the little and then of course included in the steps but your videos on the product page but you've also got that link in the two from a from a separate page there's buying guides what do people need to consider well, like what is the user what does the user need is this going to be indoors is it going to be outdoors is this going to be can the user put it away uh during winter um or does it have to be fully weatherproof to sit outside then you start giving them options based on different criteria you you build up guides okay um and no you don't have to publish every day if you are in a market because i don't know what kind of market you're in um if you're in a market where you can publish something fairly regularly that, that, that well, that's great you know like news around the stuff not necessarily the product in a broader news um that that's fine you know it doesn't have to be every day you know once or twice a month if there's any newsworthy stuff but for e-commerce and a product you typically look at it you know you look at building up content that is going to benefit the user if the user lands on it they're going to then flick through to the product and potentially purchase it this is the point of it so yeah like you know and all of that is then pushing into because all of your content around that is linking to the product so so it all works uh you know uh, in tandem thank you tim really good anybody else okay let's go to number four on our run list this one from Heno Kruger. Um, it's titled, I'm not sure if I should create a new, uh, a, or, or sorry, I should create a subdomain or start a new domain. Uh, Heno said, uh, hi everyone, I have a question. I've been running my self-hosted WordPress blog for 14 years and I've racked up more than 3,500 posts on it. So it, it's definitely not a niche site. I'm thinking of moving music posts, roughly 1700 of them uh, to another domain but i'm not sure if i should create a subdomain or start a, a new domain on its own what would be better for seo um what would be better for seo are, are you um it depends on how you're approaching this is this because you think that you can get more uh out of your 1700 posts on music by making them um more focused uh on a, a subdomain or a new domain um or um why else would you do it um yes yeah, so it's it's i was gonna go in a different direction here um you you possibly think that half of your um looking at this half of your posts are on music so are you saying um music is a separate standalone thing from the rest um yeah i i'm i i'm rather tempted to say leave it all where it is rather than mess up your um your presumably nicely functioning 14 year old blog with 3500 posts on it um i have a a, a basic rule of if it ain't bro broke don't fix it but um it could be that you have a, a a marketing idea that you can actually market this thing as a a music blog um and you can get advertising and 
um, and sponsors and such uh, more effectively by having a, a focused music, um, a music site, blog, whatever you want to call it. Um, if that's the case, I'd say don't do it for SEO, but think about it from the marketing point of view. And I would put it on a, on a domain of its own um, if that's what you're going to do. But I still am worried about taking half of the uh, half of the meat in your well-established self-hosted WordPress blog and sticking it somewhere else. Um, yeah, it's it's difficult without knowing more about this because I think the I think the answer is something more than looking at SEO. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Yeah, fair enough. All right, will we roll on to number five? I'm going to record that as a yes. Um, George Melford asked a question, and it's titled, I want to target both UK and USA regions. Uh, he goes on to say uh, it's for an e-commerce store. Um, would it be best and easier uh to make it two sites one with com the other with .co.uk uh domain or simply try to get one site to work uh, for all regions i see rishi uh, lacani has said uh, better to run one domain with subdomains and a, a proper uh, uh href lang um and currency set up. The question I would ask is, are you selling or have different content for the UK and the USA? Oh, it's an e-commerce store. Yeah. Are you selling different things to the, to the UK and the USA? Um, if you're thinking of basically having two sites that are going to be very similar if not the same um then that's not a good idea um i would basically suggest that um you do a dot com site and you will probably rank pretty well in the uk um we often see uk sites with a, a big percentage of their um of, of their um traffic coming from the us and other places so um i would go ahead and pop it on a uh, a dot com unless you've got different different products um if you've got different products and it's going to be different it's going going to be two separate things then yeah it might you might well have a good point with dot com and dot co dot uk but i think that you will you will be able to uh sell quite effectively to the uk with a, a dot com site we um we build dot coms quite often for companies in the uk so um why not uh uh why not follow that um yeah i think that's it yeah it depends on what is being sold whether it's a service or product and where you're based and so if someone has a query where do they land where do they land where do they end up i mean if someone's selling a product then my personal preference is to have two sites two domains dot com and dot go dot uk because if you're specifically targeting those two countries um so two sites and then proper hf lang um you know proper differentiation between american and british english when it's written you know currencies dollars and pounds um weights and measures well we still use um meters and grams in this country still <laughs> It might change, but uh, at this moment, um, we still use the metric system. So all those things considered, if you're selling a product, then my personal preference is to have two sites. Now, if you're selling a service and you're targeting 
two different countries and you are based in the US or the UK or somewhere else and someone rings up or tries to contact you, um, essentially there's only one point of contact. In that case, I would use the one domain. But as I said, I think it really depends on a lot of factors. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Anybody else? Okay, we're going to number six on our run list. It's uh, titled, I Need Advice About How to Choose the Main Keywords. It's from Oliver Harrison, uh, who said, hey, yeah, beautiful people. I am a new newbie to search engine optimization. I need advice about how to choose main keywords of category pages of a blog. Uh, what category, what criteria should I use to select keywords for the category pages? Is it search volume? Um, should I uh, choose uh, keywords with higher volumes uh, in my niche as uh, keywords for my category pages. Uh, look, as Perry says there, yeah, yeah, short volume, yes, but, uh, you know, it's more of a relevance to the, you know, to what is going to be nested um, within that category, you know, it, it, is it going to make sense? So also what a lot of people also sometimes do is they will they will use the exact same kind of keyword as what the actual particular kind of product service main entity on that site is that they're wanting to push, which ultimately over time can end up really cocking up your actual main site uh, for that for that particular um, top level section, because you're building more relevancy for that category in terms of the category its name, than the actual thing on site that you are building this content for. So you need to be mindful of that. Um, but you need to also select something that is going to um you know it's going to be it, it's going to be relevant to what you're going to be posting in there uh to the user and uh, jim i don't know if you know but that sharing screen has gone completely blank um, um so i'll give you an ex uh so i'll give you an example um where I've tidied up a site. Uh, it was a gym, but a lot of hair. I mean, it with a, a shed load of content. But the problem is, is a lot of their stuff was to do with more of the product that they were doing. So, for example, men, women, one to one, um, and a lot of it. Like when I went into it, a lot of it didn't sort of make sense in that kind of stuff plus you had the blog category so for example men's fitness over completely overshadowing the actual men's fitness page right which is the convert on there rather than landing on a men's fitness page people thinking it's a blog and right okay well that's not what i was looking for right i was looking for a gym so yeah you can often have them competing which is not the ideal uh, scenario um so we switched things up to like in the gym um lifestyle motivation things like that n n nothing that you would typically find or compete within that but had a lot of its own potential uh from users who are starting to um you know uh, starting to investigate things about <laughs>
I'll be back here. Yeah, oh, that killed my ear. Yeah, I, I think we've got, we've got noise. I, I don't know what's sure, sure, sure. I, I don't know how this happens. Sorry. Uh, it's terrorists. That's what it is. Invading. Invading, invading our, our little... Bloody Russian, Russian man. Story. It's a bloody Russian. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Lucky that I don't have porn on my screen. Oh, guys. We're still recording, so that's a good thing. Yeah, it's still recording. I'll chop it out. Yes, I imagine you would. But, um, you can put it at the end, you know, at the, the, the outtakes, like they do in movies. Uh, do, do you think people would care to, what, care to look at what we do? <laughs> the dumb SEO question bloopers. Just um, on Saturday, I um, as I went to the Kettering like food festival, and there was a South African boy there who was selling like uh, oh man, it was it's quality. Anyway, so I bought a massive nine hundred gram massive stick of biltong. Oh, delish, man! And I've killed it in like four days and um i'm busy busy doing a deal here for more i tell you i've just found i've just found like it's like my crack cocaine man <laughs> built on heaven oh i'll tell you what this is going to be my weakness now now that i've found good quality good supplier mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. <laughs> Maybe mm. I can try some because I, I've, um, I've no, 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 no. I've, never, I've never been, I've never been convinced by Bill Tong. Okay, you see, this is the thing: the stuff you <laughs> see in the supermarkets and stuff like that's all shade because the English government is very scared about selling stuff that has less than eighty. Uh, it's got to have. It's got to have less than twenty. 20 percent uh, uh, moisture in it that's why that all the stuff you see is this shaved crap which is like rubbish uh -huh. <laughs> but this boy because i was talking to him i said listen here listen here i don't want none of this shaved stuff you must have something under that counter and he was <laughs> like i do have something under that counter i said well that stuff under that counter needs to go onto that scale and needs to go into a bag for me. Full, full, like whole. And it's moist and pink and juicy and wet inside. It's like, it's it's still raw. It's like, um, oh. So I'm just doing this. So that's why this is, this is my, this is my drug dealer now. Uh. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Okay, we we'll get back on to the um, on, on the questions. Yeah, can can I uh, can I put a, a small amount into? I need to I need advice about how to choose main keywords. Um, volume is unlikely to be 
a good thing uh, to to choose keywords for. Um, the the higher volume keywords tend to be not niche, shall we say? They tend to be the shall we? Let's be, let's be simple about it. It'll be two words or something, and they'll be having thousands of searches probably. Um, they're going to be too. They're going to be too. Um, too general for your your niche um and they're going to be very very hard to, to rank for they're not good for your purposes you need to think about uh the the relevance uh, to your um to your product and to your 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 customers um oh it's a blog it's a blog um your readers um then and you should think about um you should think about how um how competitive it's likely to be now you can you can get a key keyword research tool um you might have to pay a bit for it um but it'll save you going after um uh, keywords that are going to be pretty difficult to get in the in the short term um they're not exact, um, and you'll find uh, that one key phrase tool um, is different from another in, in terms of what it tells you about the uh, competitiveness or ease, ease of, um, of ranking, but it will get you in the right direction. But think about, um, but think about your, your, your readers and think about um, what you want to say as well um and you need to bring those two together um if you're just if you're writing a blog and it's well it depends again are you trying to make money out of it or are you trying to enjoy yourself if you're trying to enjoy yourself then um you should be erring on the side of what what you want to write um is what you want to write likely to rank um, if you're trying to build an audience as a way to making money, then you really do need to focus on your audience and what they want. Uh, think about search intent. What are they? What is the person using that key phrase likely to be expecting from making that search? Yeah, and what's on the tin should reflect what's inside the tin. And it comes down to that. When you go to shop, you might see a lot of tins from different brands. <coughs> then you choose perhaps on packaging, how it looks. But if you buy one of those and then find out that it's completely different from what it says on the tin, you can go back. Who who was it also? And, and this is this is my um my thing uh about you know not just picking a category that is completely one of your top lines <laughs> god damn it um it was it, it, it might have been moz or who was it who was it who was it i think it was i think it may have been moz or maybe i can't remember one one of the big 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 ones they had literally called one of their categories local seo and of course their actual product for local seo just didn't exist it was completely cannibalized by this um and i think they even did a little case study on it um but eventually they bit the bullet changed it um and, and and reformatted the whole category and bear in mind at that point there was thousands and thousands of articles in there um and uh, so so now it works well in tandem with the actual top line product local seo section and and you, you see what i mean so you you really need to be careful about um, just when you when you're looking at this Thank you, Tim. 
All right, um, moving right along, we, we're going to uh, answer a question from Rick Crandell. Which domain um, would be the smartest choice for search engine optimization? Um, he goes on to say it's for, for a local business uh, not planning to expand out of the state. Um, and he gives a, a few examples, roofing-company.com, roofingcompany.co, um, roofingcompanyms.com, dash within the name. Um, it's been shown over the years that uh, people that use the web don't like dashes in names for some reason or other. Um, .co, you get that pretty cheap. Um, and the state abbreviation added to the name, and I heard that dashes are bad. Oh, well, there we are. But someone agrees with me. Um, uh, dashes are bad to do. I hear something.co is a typo, and people um, look for uh, uh, .com so, instead. So, Go so ahead. Look, this, is, this is the biggest thing that you're not even considering, Rick. Like, this is like the biggest freaking thing that you're not even considering, right? Okay, so we're looking at, you, you, clearly, you're looking for a roofing company. Okay, now a roofing company uh, has a name. Like this entity is not going to be called roofing company. Like, why would your why would your domain not match the freaking legal entity's name that you're going to be building a brand on? Right? You know, someone someone and think about it this way: someone's out of a. a, a, a over at a mate's house, a barbecue, and going, you know, what? I'm thinking, uh, I'm having issues. You know, the the house was built in the 70s, having an issue with the roof. Who did you use? Who did you use? You just had yours done, and the guy goes, roofing company, right? So then he goes home, roofing company. Now you've just led him to ten other competitors because he's googled your name roofing company but come on man sweet lord mother of jesus okay you start thinking like a business owner and building a brand and you build that brand but you optimize as a roofing company like your domain just because you've got this domain roofing company like that whole that whole myth needs to just like die like a thousand cuts um figure out what your brand is if it has roofing in all the better rick's roofing magic whatever it is right but that brand has got to carry you because you don't want someone even word of mouth going who did you use and you went oh i used roofing company uh i know i don't have the car to me i'll dig out the details but if you google roofing company oh well guy the guy google's roofing company he gets three in the local pack to choose from and then he gets another 10 in organic to choose from everyone but you like come on man pick a brand build a brand optimize for a roofing company across your site right and you can rank for it not a problem Rant over, sweet Lord. <laughs> I admire you for your confidence, uh, Tim. All right, so let's. Um... It just, it's just, it just bugs me to Lord. It's just like, uh... Uh, just, you, you, you keep going, Tim. Don't stop. I'm not going to stop now. You, you, you look. Have roofing in there by all means, because it, it, you know. But build a brand you know build a brand forget about a freaking emd domain if your emd is your brand's name fine but not roofing company and i hope to god you were just using that as an example but i'm i'm quite scared you're not but 
I hope to God you were. Yeah, and the the the, the, um, the domain won't make any difference to SEO anyway. Um, so, yeah, as as Tim says, the 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 thing is to think about uh, branding um, and how people will easily remember your uh, your business um, and differentiate it from the other guys. Um, you know, if if there's John's roofing out there, don't call your company John's Roofing. It's as simple as that. So make it unique um, and don't worry about um, SEO um, and domains. It won't, you won't get any pluses or minuses from it. So just think about your business. Okay, will we move on to the next? Recording that as a yes. Oliver Harrison um, on question eight, uh, titled, uh, I need advice about the ideal structure of a blog. Oliver Harrison, um, he, somebody else said, hey, beautiful people. Or was that, that was that, was that uh, Oliver, was it? Um, Anyway, he. Uh, I, I don't. I don't mind. I don't mind. I, I just like people saying, "Hey, beautiful people." It's it's good. It's uh, it, it makes me it makes me feel wonderful on a Thursday afternoon. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad for you, David. Um. Okay, so I need advice about the ideal structure of a blog, and from the articles I have read, it it should be in the form of a pyramid uh, with the following levels. One home page, two categories, three posts and pages. So from the above, it seems that the main navigation menu should strictly comprise of category pages. My confusion is uh, about other important standalone uh, like contact us and about us. Uh, which I feel should be linked linked to from the main menu, I think he's going to say when we go up, um, navigation menu. Uh, is it fine in terms of SEO and blog structure to add a contact us page and about us page in the main navigation menu alongside blog category pages? Will it still be a pyramid structure if I do that? Is it a must that the main navigation menu of a blog should only link to category pages? Um, I'm not sure where Oliver's been reading this stuff because it's um, it's a bucket full of poo, really. Um, have a look at have a look at websites. Have a look at at other blogs and see how they're they're set up. Um, and they're generally not in this sort of strange home page at the top. You're, you're, you're sort of suggesting that only the only at the top should be um, home page. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm actually reading this. I'm not sure what what you're suggesting, but it sounds it sounds a bit wonky to me. Um, what you should have um, is your home page your home page will be uh, displayed it's your, it's your first page um and i like uh well it's it's up to you you can either have home page or you can have your logo um as a as a link to that home page um i like to have contact us and about us um on that main menu um because people expect to see them there and if you put them somewhere else, if you if you put them down the bottom on a on a on a sub menu, um, or or on a secondary menu, um, it looks as if you're sort of hiding away. Um, you know, I don't really want you to to talk to me, and I've got something about us that I don't really want you to read. So I would put them on your main menu. Now, how the rest of it works? it depends um it depends it, it could be that your 
categories um, are, um, uh, are are menu items at the top um, because they could be things that people are interested in in the in the in the broad brush stroke of it. So let's think you're you've got a blog um, about dogs and you might have a uh, you might have a uh, a menu item on dachshunds. Uh, you might have one on cockapoos. You might have one on Heinz fifty seven um, uh, mixtures. Um, so you you might go down that that route. Um, you know you you need to think about what you're going to be saying. What how people will be finding the. Uh, how, how people will be looking for content on 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 your blog, um, and uh, and put those on your main navigation. Um, yeah, rules. Uh, I would say your your main rule is how people um, how people expect to interact with your with your blog. Um, that's why I said contact us and about us at the top, um, because people will be looking for them. And think about what people will be looking for when they come to your website and how they're going to get around it. Oh, God, that was so boring. Jim's dozed off again. Oh, uh, did I? Can I, I say something interesting? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's I, I'm sorry. I, I I caused you to doze off. This is, you know, I come on here week after week, and all I do is make you doze off. You think I'd have something interesting to say by now, wouldn't you? I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> well, the, the, the other thing in my defence um, uh, is that. Uh, my sleeping hours are different to yours. Like, I, I, I um, probably uh, I'm sleeping by eight eight p.m. and getting up at six in the morning. You know, so uh, yeah, it, it, it it's twelve thirty eight. So I'm normally fully asleep at this hour. <laughs> yeah, I, I um. I don't know how you do it, how you how you get up week after week and uh, and do this in the middle of the night. I think I'd be asleep too. Uh, but uh, well done, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how did, how did how did we go on um, uh, this, this this question uh, for Oliver Harrison? Did we well, cover I it? Finished what I was saying, um, and I, I, having seen what Perry has just said, it, it's more or less what uh, uh, what Perry has said, um, and also what Michael has said. So, yes, we're, all three of us are in in general agreement. So, listen to what I said and read what Michael and Perry said. Yep. Okay. So let's go to the next. Try to remember to stay awake. Um, Emma K asked the question titled Google Business Profiles for two businesses sharing the same location. This uh, would be one uh, right up your alley, Tim. Uh, it said Google Business Profiles for two businesses sharing the same location in, in the uh, scenario that there are two businesses that share the same location. And I, I wanted to set up separate uh, Google um, GBPs for them. And what would happen in theory if they had the following and how detrimental would it be? Uh, same phone number um, and uh, or um, the same category um, this is for a chain of businesses that operate out of or alongside other businesses. In all instances, the businesses have completely different names, branding, signage, and websites. 
but in some instances, the businesses have completely different categories. Uh, but in some instances, they do not. Uh, in most instances, the businesses are leveraging the same phone number. I want to understand the impact primarily of, of sharing the phone number, uh, as I can pretty much guess the impact of sharing a category. Essentially, will Google prevent me from creating the second listing? Will Google penalise one or both of the, the uh, Google business pages? Um, will there be display issues for one or both of the GPs? Um, any tips around one or both of these roadblocks? This situation right. absolutely warrants for two separate listings. Yes, so, go on. So no to the same category, same category for two different businesses in the same location with the same phone number. They're just going to get suspended, just off straight off the bat. Um, if you are creating ATMs in a service station, which I know something about, uh, the ATM has its own website to its own location page on that, so it won't be sharing, uh, 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 you know, any form of website. Um, it will have its own name. Um, it will have its own category, being ATM. A service station will be a service station and the telephone number that you do for kiosks has to be the telephone number for the support for those ATMs. So all those ATMs can be the same, but it needs to be your own telephone number to the support, and obviously that's listed on that website also. No, you can't share the, the like, why would a user even phone the service station to ask them a technical question about, like, why would they phone them? <laughs> it's just nonsensical. Um, no, it has to be its own support telephone number. Um, and under GMB, if you're talking an ATM, a kiosk inside of a business that's unmanned, it needs to have um, a signage on it with obviously the name, um, head office contact, head office uh, address, um, typically the, the main website and any other contact information for emergencies, uh, things like that, um, if something goes wrong with the kiosk. But no, uh, no, a separate, separate telephone number, separate category, but you can use the same address. Um, and then another little tip for you is when they go live, you can mark them as located inside of that main location. Run that past me again, Tim. When, the, when these go live. You can suggest edit and nest it with inside that location. So when somebody serves, so when if you nest it inside the main location, when somebody actually serve looks for the service for the main for that main address or for that service station, because that's the actual building itself, um, it it will list a thing called a directory within that service station. And within that service station, the directory will include things that have nested themselves in it. So one will be an ATM. The next will be, let's say, there's a 24-hour um, emergency repair site section thing that for when the service, that when the thing's closed, it'll list the emergency. So yeah, it'll, it creates a directory of things nested inside that. Or so, for example, like another way to think about it is like um, a supermarket, big supermarkets. Um, you will get chemists in them. You will get dry cleaners, post office, all of that. And that, if you nest it inside, you get you get listed in the directory also. So it's added exposure for when people are viewing what's inside the supermarket. Thank you, Tim. All right, so let's move on to the next. This one from Brett Sullivan. Does anyone recommend a good tutorial on map stacking? Um, does anyone recommend Shoot a good me tutorial? Dead now. You go ahead, Tim. Shoot me freaking dead now. <laughs> uh, look, map stacking, they look pretty. Yeah, you can make some really pretty ones.
but this has been debunked like i don't know how many times over the last 10 years it's just it just does not not work because you're creating it on a separate entity it may be in maps but it's not in maps it's got nothing to do with anything yeah you can get that created map to rank wow but it's it's like and when someone clicks on it in in the organic search results because it's not anywhere anywhere else they just get a really pretty map of just your business it's like mate no 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 debunked um debunked 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 i think so many people have debunked it uh, over the years it's just yeah um it's just bad now as to your second city so you already rank well for your main site so your main site was junk removal services and your main site was all lending to to a particular area because you may have embedded your initial business profile on there you may have had your address in there you may have had you know your service areas listed on there all your content around it everything was just solely leading to that or and benefiting that junk removals in xyz location and its variants okay so now you've got a second location which is uh it, like it's completely separate it's not even next door right so this is the problem you've got your entire site as it is now is geared towards this particular location service right you need to now separate this out and it's probably going to do a little bit of redesign because you now need to separate it out so you, 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 your your whole top line now is going to be junk removal and it 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 has to be junk just junk removal because you can't have it in an area now and then you, you see what i mean it's not going to show junk removal to that area because google tries to display relevant to the user so if they're on a desktop their ip if they're on a, a, a mobile phone, their GPS coordinates. It's not going to show the same thing for your homepage. So your junk remove, your homepage now needs to be just top level junk removal, um, as well as your obviously your services. Okay. Then now you need to create location pages. So you need to create a location page for your original. And you need to create a location page for your new okay um you need to make them quite interesting unique your your your, your first one is still going to benefit because it's within the site and it's going to love it anyway it, you're still going to do well on that but your second one your location page um and although yes it's still just junk removal you need to kind of switch it up to that particular area <coughs> so i don't know like in that new area just try obviously you can have your first paragraph as where xyz blah blah blah, blah. it's going to be pretty much the same but you, you need to look for a little bit of a hook that is going to work well for it um are there any i don't know is 1500 miles away is it in a different state do they have different legislations about disposal environmental impact has that area in that 1500 miles away um uh, you know has that particular area that it's in have slightly different environmental codes do they have slightly different you know anything that you can kind of differentiate but then reinforce the fact that it's in this location okay um your structured data is going to be slightly different now you're going to have a brand structured data and you're going to have two um two entities within it uh, under parent like a parent organization for local businesses as in junk removal um 
but on each location page you're only going to display the unique one to that property and of course you're going to embed it you're going to have your working times your areas you probably definitely have two separate people working because there's no way some guy's going to drive 1500 miles to collect something so that's another little differentiation on your two location pages have the teams this is brett brett and brett and dave um work in xyz location they live here they both grown up they you know they've got a passion for you know the environment doing a good job blah 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 new location page it's tim and tim and john um you know um they whatever blah 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 so it's a slight differentiation um and the next thing you can do then is you know some of your copy your site stuff um i would start looking at some you know uh, a lot of stuff and i know it's junk removal but some more localized stuff like i said about environmental for that particular area that can be copied that will that can be linked through to that particular location page you need to lend a little bit of weight behind it but just bolting a new location in is not really going to benefit you because at the minute like i said the entire structure is working for it's understood it's understood it as a location but you now need to kind of separate the two out and put them back in so your 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 services and your top line is junk removal and now you have as a company and now you have locations for that company <coughs> i hope i explained that See, you were boring then, Tim. <laughs> Jim! Jim! Jim, Jim, Jim! Jim, 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 Jim. Hello, Jim. Thank you, Mikey. Woo! It's very nice. <laughs> oh, no. I'll get me. Hey. I I'll just had me. a text from the nhs i'm i'm eligible for another COVID 19 vaccination because now i'm over 50. well oh. I was, um i was invited and then i, I, got I don't know I couldn't get any i couldn't get it because i had covid which was not good so i i don't know like what do you what, like, you know what i mean i i don't know about this hey hmm? I don't know. Are, are you going to do another one and another one for freaking life? Well, I have a I have a flu jab every year. No, I don't either. Um, God damn it! Because, I don't know. because I'm asthmatic, I I get a flu jab. Uh, so I don't see any any different than having a a flu jab. I I have a flu jab and I'm happy with it. So I'm going to have a COVID jab yeah the thing is you didn't have shit happen like you, your face didn't swell up your teeth didn't fall out oh man. yes of course yes 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 of course sorry i, oh, I yeah I'm, I'm, not I, I'm being old and forgetful i am mm, you know, I'm jim, so, uh, jim would understand yeah, i'm not so sure man forgetful, but yeah oh shit, yeah oh fuck. was was that yeah is that general exhibitions figure was was that a um no, no I, I initially had COVID and then I just completely had all these things. And then after I had the jabs, more stuff would flare up. And then I had another one, then more stuff would flare up. Oh, shit. Yeah. Mm. I, I apologize. I should have remembered that. But, mm. but... So I'm not so sure, man. I'm like, oh. yeah. Uh, I, I can see your hesitancy. Yeah. I mean, essentially, I've already had three because I had the fucker and then the shots. But God damn it, I don't know. Well, I had COVID after my 
three jabs. So uh, I'm not saying that that uh, you will get it, but um, you can get it. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, full on. Yeah, you know, I'll probably wait until I need to travel again. And then depending on that country's requirements, maybe then do it then. But, yeah, we'll see. Mm. Okay, we've got six questions left. Would you like to? Yes, yes. We took a tangent, Jim. We took yes, a tangent. Yes, it's a tangent. Yes. So thank, we we thought we'd give you an opportunity to wake yourself up, mate. Yeah, <laughs> well, we thought you'd find that more interesting than us going on about SEO. You know. Yeah. This this is this is life or death. So um, you know. Yeah. You, you quite clearly, my quite clearly, my answer was sending you off to sleep, mate. <laughs> it, it wasn't that I was just thinking back, you know. Um, uh, anyway, it's still. Uh, just just, uh, just get on with it, Jim. Come on. We used, we used to do like five, six hours of dumb SEO. Yeah. And but that was that was um, about um, 2010. So. It's, and the, this is now 2022, so 12 years later. You're, you're saying it feels like 12 years listening to us. That's not very nice. Cheeky. <laughs> no, we just all have long COVID, so we can't cope. Right. Okay, next question. Next. All right, let's 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 have a look at this one it's from Linda Weigerman. When can I expect it to rank? Um, for a new site, when can I expect it to rank relatively decently if SEO is well done on the page? Also, any recommendations of where to get high quality backlinks? So I I really just need ten or so to start off with. Um, have an answer from Michael Okay, so right, when can you expect now? You say, a rel you know, if you're a relatively decent SEO, so look, th this is the this is the kind of thing like, so this new site's gone live. Like, what is it? Is it you know, a couple of service pages or product pages? and then 10 10 supporting bits of content around the site yeah right and you and what you're slowly adding a bit of content to it doing a bit of uh, you know like uh marketing um aka seo um yeah you're looking at maybe a year on that if you start if you launch that site and you had pre-built it and you had pre-planned it and you had the content and you had like you know a lot of stuff around it oh my battery's flashing um then you know it, it could be a bit faster but you know google needs to understand you google needs to index stuff uh and they need to understand how they're going to put you into the whole relative thing um as for 10 things 10 like i don't know where you got the thing from 10 but what are you? Are you a local business? Well, then do Chamber of Commerce, sponsor a football team. Um, you, you know, those are all quick links for you. Uh, see if there's any other local businesses that will complement you. You're a florist and they're a coffee shop. Well, you link to the thing going, hey, whilst we're doing your flowers, go and have a coffee. They link to you going, whilst you're having a coffee, you know, they can do your flowers kind of stuff. <laughs> you think I'm asleep, do you? <laughs> I'm a, like a meerkat, man. No, I had to plug in my, my, my battery. All right. Yeah, um, you know, it's. Well, don't go and buy backlinks, please, God. Hey, you know what? Is this a new site, new business? You know what? I know people go press releases these days. Yeah, they're pretty crap. But uh, there are sites out there where you can obviously, one, have a proper one written, and two, 
um, you can submit them out to uh, a proper journalist, not just a boil boilerplate, you know, those submission things. Stay away from the submission things. Um, do you think the fire alarm's gone off? I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, 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 Tim lives in a four-story house, so it could be somebody at the back door. Oh. And there's me thinking it was it was burning down. Mm -hmm. oh, I think mm -hmm. he was expecting a keyboard to arrive. Oh, yes. it's, it's not, it's, it's not built on. He's, he's not going to. Uh, oh, you mean we've got the, the things back. to your ears as well as the keyboard? We're, we're, it's, is it the built on? No, built on will be a few days to arrive. Oh, oh, well, I thought it was. On? I thought it was my keyboard arriving, but it wasn't. It was just uh, I'm, this area is being targeted at the minute by all these in door to door people at the minute. Oh, Jehovah's Witnesses. No, uh, Hello Fresh, Cancer Charities, RSPCA, all this. They're just losing the heat in this area. No, you you've just tip, tip, tipped over the 50. They've got your, your little sign on your on on your back back gate and they know they they can t take you up and uh, provide you with their, their services the, the rspca is never going to be back here again because when they said donation i called freddie over i chucked him out the door and i closed the door <laughs> <laughs> all right so will we go past this one and go to another one Let's yeah, yeah, we've yeah. we've we're bored with this one. Let's let's have another one. Yeah, and just before we do go, I I just want to say that, that to Linda, she may have missed inside um, all 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 the frivolity, um, the the um, statement. Uh, not only do, do our online people um, say don't buy black links, um, but Michael Martin has uh, said it there very clearly. Anyway, let's go to number number um, twelve on our run list. El Bakito. He said, "So, what are the SEO to do is solely for lead generation sites? So, I wanted to invest in a lead gen site, and what are the SEO to do's solely for uh, lead gen sites?" And of course, Michael Martinez. There he is. He's got an answer there. What do you guys have to say about that? So, like, yeah, look, it all depends on what, like, lead gen is. Um, essentially, like, I, I mean, there could be quite a few different ones, but let's just say, for example, I don't know, you're doing it for plumbers. You know, you need to be like Max. You need you, you need content on there that is going to be so spot on. Uh, you are going to need to literally satisfy pretty much every kind of search query that the homeowner is going to be searching for about plumbers, because you have to intersect them. You need to find, you know, you need to intersect them, and then funnel it to hey here's your choice of plumbers in your area right so you need to now do a better job than google google my business uh you need to do a better job than i mean who the frick it, i think yell still exists doesn't it um hang on let me go plumbers Ah, you need to now also, uh, you've got um, local service ads. So that's like Google's right on the top. Then you've got ads. Uh, then you've got like, I don't know what country you're in, but I mean, we've got loads for different services like check a trade trust. Then you've got 
Google My Business Local Pack. Then you've got basically check a trade trust. Those are also lead gens. Yes. Then you've got then you're competing against Yale. And who else? And then you start, and then you've got Thompson local rated people. Like literally 70% of a local search result is directories, aka lead gens. Um if you're going to do this, you need to like literally put and invest in a serious amount because you need to intersect the people that aren't going to be searching for a plumber. Like, you know, that's your end goal. Yes. But you need to catch every single person in between with every kind of potential freaking query under the sun about plumbing. Um, maybe also even do some kind of like i don't know i mean i don't know what you're doing but let's just say plumbers like maybe even some kind of pricing kind of thing like you've got to you've got to come up with something that's not done or at least something where you're offering a little bit of extra value mm -hmm. any more okay let's go on this one from uh, Alan um, Peter. It's titled, I think I have a partial penalty on a site. Um, he has them to say, I, uh, anyone with any experience of this and uh, how to recover, um, remove uh, the non indexed pages and keep building. Uh, any other suggestions? I'm pretty sure it's an algo rhythmic penalty. Well, I think Michael Martin has answered yeah. the question quite fully. And um, I think it is important to distinguish penalty as something different from um, ups and downs caused by the algorithm, which constantly changes. And as Michael Martin has points out, um, penalties are different from quality and relevance scoring. Penalties are manual overrides of the algorithms. So in a sense, it's either or, you know, you have it or not. And if you're not seeing manual penalty, then the likelihood is that your site has been affected um, by the relative performances of other sites. You know, other sites might, might have improved in the meantime. So they're more relevant or they're seen as higher quality or better responses to search queries and so on and so forth. So um, it might be better to stop thinking in terms of, oh, I've got a penalty and rather look at your site and how your site has been performing and what improvements you can make based on the current situation and assessment. Given that there's so little information, it's very difficult to say anything beyond the generalities. Though, you know, the question, the two questions, uh, well, so the one, remove the non-indexed pa non pages. You know, the question arises, why are they non-indexed in the first place? What was the purpose of non-indexing? And why do you think removing that would improve your science ranking? Again, I'm not so sure there is a proper causal relationship between those two. Or, or does he mean um, pages that have not been indexed in, um, in Google uh, uh, yeah. Search console. Oh, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that's that makes much more sense. Um, yeah, that, that's why I read it. So, um, remove the not again. Ask yourself why? Why are they? Why haven't they been indexed? Um, you know, Google's not always uh, very good at indexing all of the 
page as it should do, but um, make sure you haven't non-indexed it or something silly, um, or there's something um, something about the page design that's making it difficult to to index the content. Um, have a good look at it and find out why um, why Google might not be indexing it. Otherwise, wait. It will get round to you eventually. Yeah, I think that's another point. It can take quite a long time um, for Google to come around and firstly discover, then crawl the page. So it may be a question of patience. Yep, that's true. Okay. Um, moving on to uh, one from Jill Arvanitis. Uh, it's titled, Is there a standard or target percentage of branded keywords to capture in SEO? Michael yeah, Martinez okay. with a succinct no. Yeah, as Michael says, no. But then Jill <laughs> said that she's been, she's been asked internally. Um, like, I, I, I don't really know how you, I, I don't really know how you're going to quantify to them. Like, the point is, if your percentage of branded keywords um it, it is quite like let's say fairly low um like something sitting on like 20 percent um then it can be interpreted interpreted as two sort of ways um it, you could, essentially your brand isn't such your brand isn't in the environment that is being searched um like nike i'm gonna take like this weird ass guess here and say nike's branded searches are off the charts but something like um something like a company that manufactures screws that gets distributed globally around the world that are sold via independence third parties blah 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 you and you typically don't sell direct to trade i mean to direct to public i would expect your branded search queries to be virtually nothing um because there's no value to a user in searching it the only ones that are searching it are the stockists that want to stock it and the branded queries are going to be more like xyz brand stockist because the tradie really likes those branded screws and he wants to find the nearest stockist you aren't necessarily going to be appearing because the trading needs to buy it or whatever. So, you know, I want, yeah. Mm. I it think, depends, yeah. <laughs> so, no, 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 go. I think it also depends on the, on the nature of the business, but for a different reason. Um, something like Nike. Um, has a load of different products. So it can be Nike this and Nike that shoe and Nike something else and Nike blah, blah, blah. If you are a screw manufacturer, you are only making screws. You're gonna have far fewer products and therefore likely far fewer branded keywords. The question is not about percentage of traffic, a percentage of the uh sorry the, the number of branded keywords 
So it depends on the nature of your business. If you've got lots and lots of products or services or or, or you have a complex business rather than a simple business, you're likely to have more branded keywords. Um, but you could say, following this on, and, um, if you've got a more complex um, business and you have all those branded keywords, you're also going to have loads more unbranded keywords. Oh, my God. You can't tell. There is no such thing as a percentage, no. um, whichever way you go at it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> poor, poor Jill, you know, um, because the boss wants it. You know, you have to give something, um, and you know, it's the wrong well, question the, to ask. The, the boss has asked, but you know, there isn't a standard. No. Is the answer? You know, mm -hmm. you can't you can't make up a uh, a lie just because the 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 bosses are asked a question yeah yeah <laughs> so perhaps one way i might approach this in this instance and it obviously depends on the personalities that the business etc all of that you know there are many factors involved but one thing i would look at is okay so how much of your search traffic is branded how much of it isn't how well do each of those um uh, convert into sales for instance so the result into that or attribute so you know if you, if someone is looking for something you know if it's the keyword the generic term plus useful or good or blue or yellow or red whatever you know attributes that is related to that thing to a generic term rather than branded for instance how well do they convert so you try to see what people are looking for how well you're converting each of those funnels and then see what marketing campaigns can be done based on that but that is going to involve something more than the seo position and SEO work as such. It's more about understanding your customers, understanding where people are coming from, understanding what they're doing, and then trying to construct a suitable marketing strategy, an overall one. That's not necessarily about SEO. Yeah. Yeah, Okay, well, we move on to the next. Recording that as a yes. Um, this one from Shweta Rama Nujam. Um, Shweta said, uh, I don't see my articles rank. I was ranking on the first page for a few keywords according to Google Search Console. But when I searched on Google, I don't see them. Um, this happened all of a sudden. No issue with indexing either. Any help would be appreciated. So if you're just looking at the top level, the very first thing when you go into Search Console and you like overview and then you see and then you add the positions and you look right, that is aggregated globally, right? Um, so what you need to do is on the top there in, in the little plus there's a filter button and just sort out your location by country uh and that you will see all of a sudden change right you shouldn't then necessarily be seeing position ones for a search query anymore that you don't exist for other potential explanation is are you um a local business and are you do you are you positioned for um in the local pack there's been a bit of a glitch or a weirdness i suppose over the last six months 
where Search Console is partially showing your business based on UTM tracking codes, but that's only if you know. And then, of course, if you didn't have a UTM tracking code in your business, then it is showing it, and then other times it's not. But your first job is just switch it to add your correct country's location, and then you should see a more accurate reflection. Excellent. Where's my page gone? Well, so there, James? I, I, yes, I, I, I'm just looking for uh, a page. Random clicking doesn't get him back. Mm. Google Search Console is actually quite good fun to um, segment all your traffic and all of that you know, by device, countries, etc. It's quite good fun. I, I, I think you should get out more, Massa. Oh, the big scary world outside. <laughs> I, I, I'm stuck in at the moment. It's, it's, oh. it's, like, it's like lockdown because I have to look after the uh, the recovering dog, mm. and we can't have people round or even knocking on the door because we oh, can't. Get excited. Going mm. potty. Yeah. Mm. So uh, yeah, it's it's just like lockdown. It is. Yeah. So the answer is to go and play on Google Search Console. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, ever since they moved over to the new one, I think the presentation's much nicer. It is, yes. And yeah, it's quite good fun to look, look at things. Um, and, you know, I had a sort of mystery of, having a lot of queries in south america you know even though i have no spanish content so that was a bit weird and trying to figure that out um those kind of things so it's it, it can be quite interesting and as michael martin has answers in that you know google search console is the only accurate measure of true true rankings Okay, well, I, I, I'd say it's time. Uh, it's that time again. We, we, we uh, thank everybody for, for coming and, and um, make our way into the sunset. I, I shall saddle up my horse and uh, get my hat on. And uh... oh, you were one of the four horsemen. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. That that's that's the Tory party. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no politics. No politics. Hmm. I, before we go, I should say to Sweden um, that uh, it's normal that that you will uh, um, see something in Google Search Console, which. Um, you just can't uh, pin down um, when you're um, not not in Google Search Console. Um, it, it's because um, a, 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 a a search query it, it just the, the the results are just so multifaceted. There's just so many different alternatives and uh, um, ways in which that search query can can be pushed back to the, 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 the reader in the quest of look, finding what they're looking for. It's anyway, it's, it's perfectly normal. And uh, um, eventually um, she, will, she will see everything. Okay.
Um, anything else before before we uh, declare the meeting closed? Okay. Well, oh, before I go, I, I must thank particularly Michael Martinez, um, but also Peter Bernard and um, you guys, um, Masataki, um, David and Tim. Um, yeah, we'll be back at the same time next week to do this uh, all again. We'll look forward to it. And we'll be there. It's going to work out how to uh, stop this thing then.